Here we'll only talk about spherical mirrors and of two types, convex and concave. The reflective side is closest to where the object is. The other side of the mirror, that is the back side of a convex mirror, is where the focal point is located, where the center of curvature is located. The center of curvature is behind a convex mirror for the simple reason that if this mirror were a complete sphere, it's only a portion of a sphere, but if it were a complete sphere, clearly the center would have to be over here on the right. The distance between the center of curvature and the mirror is called the radius of curvature. And the distance between the focal point, capital F, and the mirror is the focal length, little f. So the focal length is little f. The focal point is capital F. And it turns out that the focal length is one half of the radius of curvature. When we get into the math of spherical mirrors, it's important to remember that a convex mirror, by convention, has a negative focal length. Mirrors that you might have seen in the corner of a drugstore so that you'll know if someone is coming the other way or in the corner of hospital hallways, those are convex mirrors. If you look at yourself through a spoon, not the part of the spoon that holds the soup, but the other part of the spoon, that kind of acts like a convex mirror. If you ever did holiday decorating when you were a kid and were putting bulbs on a tree and noticed that there was a little U in there, that bulb acts very much like a convex mirror. Mirrors on the passenger side of vehicles are curved somewhat in a convex manner. The other type of spherical mirror is a concave mirror. And in this case, again, the object that we're going to deal with later on will be on the left here, but the mirror is shaped the other way. In other words, the center of curvature and the focal point are on the same side of the mirror as the object that we will be considering. As before, the distance between the center of curvature and the mirror is the radius of curvature and the distance between the focal point, capital F, and the mirror is the focal length, lowercase f. For concave mirrors, again this is not important for this lesson but it will be later on, for concave mirrors the focal length is positive. And the way I remember the difference between concave and convex, a concave mirror, the object is over here and it walks over here it kind of walks into a little cave. So that's how I remember what a concave mirror is shaped like relative to where an object is. When we vex someone, it's a very negative emotion. Convex mirror has a negative focal length. Therefore, a concave mirror must have a positive focal length. And here are a few pictures of concave mirrors. The other side of a spoon the side of the spoon that holds the soup. A makeup mirror is going to be a concave mirror. This mirror, perhaps used in a telescope, is a concave mirror. It's shaped more or less like a bowl. Positive focal lengths for concave mirrors. Convex mirrors cause incident light rays that are parallel to separate appearing to emanate from a single point behind the mirror, the focal point. Concave mirrors cause incident parallel rays to converge at a focal point in front of the mirror, on the same side of the mirror as the object. Convex mirrors have negative focal lengths, concave positive. 